Hey everybody! Welcome to a brand new unit. We've reviewed ISAT stuff, we've done complex numbers. Time to do the last full unit. That's unit 7. And this unit is rationals. Dun dun dun! Alright, so what, what is a rational? That's actually a pretty simple answer. A rational is a fraction. Which, for those of you who are immediately terrified, these are not that bad, I promise. Okay. Um, the word ratio is in rational. That's where we're getting fractions. So if you think back to triangles, trigonometry, sometimes you come up with side ratios. Those are fractions. Similar triangles, um, trigonometry, sine, cosine, tangent, that kind of stuff. We're going to start with simple rationals. Okay. We are going to be simplifying monomials. So simplifying means we're going to put things in simplest terms. We're not going to be doing complicated dividing operations. We're going to basically be reducing fractions. We're going to start with monomials. Monomials, there's no adding or subtracting involved in these fractions. Okay? It's just a single term above another single term. Single term numerator, sing single term denominator. Okay, so let's talk about how we simplify normal fractions. I have this fraction 6 over 8. I'm not going to divide it. I'm going to reduce it, simplify it. It reduces to 3 over 4 because you can take a 2 out of both the 6 and the 8. And now we know how to do this, but let's look at why this works because that will help us going forward. So I'm going to break the 6 down into the things that multiply to get the 6, into its factors. So 6 is really the numbers 3 times 2. And we're going to do the same thing with the 8. We're going to break it down into a couple of factors. 4 times 2. 4 can break down again, but we'll, we'll leave it at this. What is happening, if you see the 2 over the 2, they end up dividing into the number 1. And a multiplying 1 is often a hidden 1 because 1 times 3 is still just 3. So think of x's, 1 in front of an x, it's a hidden 1. So this 1 becomes a hidden 1 because it doesn't change anything, and if there was a 1 on the bottom, it wouldn't change it. So that's what's happening. What's happening is you're finding factors that reduce to 1, and they look exactly the same, top to bottom. Not top and top, not bottom and bottom. 1 has to be in the numerator, one has to be in the denominator, and they need to be identical. All right, so we're going to try it out on this little guy. Okay, so we could go 14 over 70 and directly reduce that to 1 over 5, because a 14 does go into both of them. So we could do that. But we're going to do it the long way just so you see what's happening again. 14 is really the number 2 times 7. And I'm going to put them in parentheses because it's going to look more familiar later. And then there's also an x up there. So that's a single term on top, 2, 7, and x. On the bottom, I'm going to split that into 7 and 10. And then there's an x squared. That means there's actually two x's running around. And they look like that, an x and another x. Now we're going to be looking for things that cancel to the number 1. They need to be identical, one in the numerator and one in the denominator. So the 7s cancel. And then a single x can only take out one more x. You can't take them both out. So choose whoever you don't like. So we'll take single x, and I apparently don't like the first x. Okay, so all of those have now canceled into 1s. We still have a 2 on top. So we'll let him go over there. Okay, The 7 and the x from the numerator have canceled, so the 2 is the only thing left. On the bottom, there's a 10, but 10 can break into more factors. So let's go ahead and break 10 into 2 and 5. And the reason we're doing this is because there's a match up top. And there's a still a leftover x from the bottom that didn't cancel. Okay, so now we're looking at a fraction where there's a couple of other twins, one from the top, one from the bottom, and they cancel into the number 1. 
and all these ones are turning into hidden ones, except that now that there's something on top, well, there's nothing on top, actually, and we need something on the top of the fraction. The hidden one is going to be not quite so hidden. So if everything disappears from either the numerator or the denominator, the hidden one can show up. Okay, so there is an x left over. So the 1 fifth came from the 14 over 70. The x came from the x part of the monomial. The x on top canceled two of the x's on the bottom. We have a big monomial, 1470s, turned into something much smaller. Okay, so we have the 1 fifth and the x over x squared turned into just x. And the reason this is working is because factors, those are the things that multiply to get the numbers, are canceling to 1. Okay, we're going to do it the long way one more time. Yes, some of you know exactly how to reduce 18 over 81, but we're going to show one more time, why this works. Okay, There are four x's, so there are the four x's here. 18 breaks into 2 and 9. Breaks into other things too, but I chose 2 and 9 because it will help with 81. Okay, and 81 will break into 9 times 9. And then there's that single x on the bottom. Okay, there we go. And now we're looking for things that are identical, numerator to denominator, that will cancel into the number 1, into hidden ones. So the 9s, 9s are going to cancel. Okay, that single x on the bottom, he can cancel one of the four x's, he can't cancel any more than that. So there it goes. Okay, now on the bottom, the remaining 9 can break a little bit further. You could split him into 3 times 3. But there's no 3's on top, so that's not going to be super helpful. There, there's nothing to cancel those 3. So we're pretty much done. So now we just need to collect who's left. So there's a 2. He's left in the numerator. There are 1, 2, 3 x's. That makes an x cubed. Exponents track multiplying x's, and they're all multiplying. That 9 and the other x, they've been canceled into hidden ones. In the denominator, the only thing left is a 9. And there it goes. Okay, Everything else has been canceled. So that's the answer. Okay, so let's start looking for shortcuts for these variables. Okay, We have x cubed in our final answer. Okay. Look back at where that came from. How could we get x cubed from these x's? Okay, Look for your biggest collection of x's. There's four x's on top. On the bottom, we're going to take away a single x. Okay, We're going to subtract off a single x because it's canceling. 4 minus 1 gets you the 3. So 4 minus that single x on the bottom gets you 3. So there is a fast way of reducing the variables, the same way you reduce the numbers, by having parts of them cancel to hidden ones. Okay, biggest x is on the bottom. There's two x's on the bottom. We're going to take away the top x. That leaves us a single x on the bottom. So your variables will be wherever the biggest collection of variables are. And for that, you're looking at the exponents. So wherever the high exponent is on the variable, that's where that variable will end up in the fraction. Okay, we're going to try the fast way here. We're going to straight reduce. 18 over 9, if you take a 9 away from both of them, reduces to 2 over 1, because you can divide them both by 9, and those 9s are canceling to a hidden 1. Find your biggest collection of variables. There's two x's on the bottom. Okay, that's more than on top. These two x's, we're going to take away a single x, that leaves you 1x, okay? Just 1x, and he's on the bottom where the biggest collection used to be. That's basically your answer, but see the ones? You can actually make them hidden ones. So that 1 in front of the x and the 1 that's in the exponent, they can go away because I can see there's a single x. Okay, so both of those are correct answers. You can keep your ones around if you like to note who's doing what, um, but you can also make them hidden ones if you want a closer 
match to the answer key. All right, last of the monomials. Okay, so I see a couple of twins, which means we can reduce. Those things are going to cancel into ones, specifically hidden ones. Okay, let's try out the variables. The most x's are on top. There's five x's on top. Watch the exponents for that. That means we're going to take those five x's and then we're going to take away two of them. Two of them will be canceled. So if you start with five and you take away two of them, you should be left with three of them. Okay, so three x's and the finishing x's, the ending x's, will be on the same fraction level as the, the biggest the collection of x's. Okay. Okay, you can divide by one and end up with the same thing. So dividing ones or ones in the denominator, you can also hide them. Ones in the numerator, if they're the only thing in the fraction, you have to keep them around because one divided by something is not the something. One divided by five is 0.2. X cubed divided by one is still X cubed. So a dividing one, if that's the only thing in the denominator, that's okay, you can hide it. But don't hide numerator ones if they're the only thing that's left. All right, on to new rationals. We're going to leave behind the monomials, at least some of them. The guy on top here in the numerator is still a monomial, but the one in the denominator is no longer a monomial. It is a polynomial, a binomial. It has two terms in it. Okay. Things to watch for in identifying polynomials, the plus sign. Now we're still going to be simplifying, and when we're working with rationals, that means we're basically going to be reducing fractions. Okay. You reduce fractions by factors. That's what we were doing up above. Things that multiplied to get the numbers or the variables. Okay, that's what a factor is. It's a multiplier. They were canceling with their exact twin, either above or below, to create hidden ones. Okay, so a factor is a multiplier that will help create a monomial, those are single terms, or a polynomial, and that's what we're going to be playing with in this section. Okay, so polynomials, there's a catch to these guys. Okay, there's a catch in how they reduce or how you cancel them out. Okay? Polynomials cancel by factors, just like everybody else does. Okay? They do not cancel by parts. Okay? That's a big fat, don't do that. And everybody wants to. Okay? They cancel the same way that monomials do. Numbers, variables that aren't connected with plus or minus signs. Okay? So here's what everybody is going to want to do. There's an X on top and an X on the bottom. People are going to want to cancel them. Okay? They don't cancel. All right? The X on the bottom, okay, in the denominator, is not a factor. Okay? We could not divide 15 by 45X, 15 plus 45X, by the X, and gets it can get a nice normal answer. Okay, it would have a remainder. That's not a factor. We have to factor that, okay, and look to see what it cancels. But in the meantime, a polynomial is in parentheses. Okay, so watch for addition and subtraction signs. The moment you see an addition or a subtraction sign connecting things, put it in parentheses. Okay, do not let yourself cancel that. Okay, so we're going to give ourselves a little bit of a guideline for what we're looking for when we're reducing. Okay, so first of all, one of the things we're looking for are lone numbers. That would be just like the number 10. Okay, you can pull them out of polynomials by finding the greatest common factor. We'll do that in a second. Okay, the second thing we're looking to cancel are lone variables. Now both of these we've been doing up above. Okay, 
You can also find more of these with greatest common factors. Okay, that's the GCF, greatest common factor, the biggest multiplier that can go into everything. Here's the new one that we didn't do up above. We are looking to cancel factored polynomials. Okay, and I will show you what that looks like in just a sec. One and two, we did up above. We canceled and reduced loan numbers. Okay, we canceled and reduced loan variables, mainly x's. Okay, that 10 and that x, those are loan numbers and loan variables. But on the bottom, that's a polynomial. Okay, we're going to look for greatest common factors to see if we can get more loan numbers and more loan variables. So what can go into a 15 and a 45? 15, actually, can go into both. You want the biggest number possible. That's what the G in GCF is. That's the greatest or the biggest common factor. You want to go as big as possible. So 15, we're going to divide it out. We're basically going to undistribute it. So you want something that if you distribute it, you get back to the original. So 15 divided by 15 is a 1. And if you try and get back to the original, 15 times 1 gets you back to that original 15. Okay. So 45, we're going to divide out the 15, and we're going to get a 3. The x does not come out. He's stuck inside the polynomial. He's, he's not a greatest common factor. Okay, 10x, we're just going to leave that on top. All right, now we're going to look at loan numbers. Okay, are there any loan numbers? 10 okay, is a loan number. 15 is now a loan number because he's outside polynomial. They can reduce each other because they are both loan numbers. So 10 over 15, they can reduce by 5. Okay, Don't involve the polynomial. Just look at the loan numbers. They are not connected by plus or minus signs. So 10 over 15 will reduce by 5s to 2 over 3. So we're going to reduce them just like a normal fraction. We're now looking for loan variables, just loan x's. Okay? They could be connected by multipliers, but they cannot be part of a plus or a minus sign. So like that x in the polynomial, he's attached to a 3 who's adding. Okay? He's not a loan variable. He's attached to a 3 that's adding. Okay? But we can reduce loan variables. It's just that the x doesn't have anybody that will cancel him. So he's still in the final answer. Okay, we're also looking to reduce or cancel factored polynomials. We'll add in the ed. 1 plus 3x, in order to cancel that guy, what we would need is an identical 1 plus 3x on top. Okay, and they would cancel. Because we do not have an identical polynomial, he is still stuck at 1 plus 3x. And that is the final answer. Okay, loan numbers are as low as they get, loan variables are as low as they get. The factored polynomial doesn't have anyone that can cancel him. Okay, those x's that are still in there do not cancel. One's a loan variable, but the other one is part of a factored polynomial. Okay, one's the, the different parts can't cancel other different parts. Okay, they have to be matches. All right, let's go with this guy. We're going to color code this, too. Bright idea I had midway through. Wish I'd had it on the first one, but that's okay. We're going to put polynomials in green. Polynomials, a good way to watch for polynomials is anything that is connected with a plus or a minus. So if you have a term that's a collection of multipliers, and it's connected by a plus sign or a subtraction sign, that's a polynomial. Okay? Polynomials are groups, okay? Put them in parentheses to protect them. Don't cancel anything in a group, any part of a group. Groups have to cancel all or nothing. Okay, there are no loan numbers and there are no loan variables. There's just two groups. So we're going to see if there are greatest common factors. Uh, X plus 8 does not have any greatest common factors, but the denominator does. There are things that can go into the denominator. But the x plus 8 is kind of stuck. There's, there's, I mean, a 1. You could pull 1 out, but 
and turn into a hidden one. It's kind of useless. But on the bottom, look at the numbers. Okay? Can we pull a number out? And you can pull a number out. Okay? 3 can go into both 3 and 24. It has to go into both of them. Everything in the polynomial it has to be able to go into everything in the polynomial or divide out of everything. Okay, we're going to put lone variables in blue. Okay, and we're looking for greatest common factors. Is there something in common? What do they have in common? And they both have at least a single x. The first one's got two x's, but the back one's only got one. 3x squared, there's two. Okay, so let's create the factored polynomial. Okay, so I'm going to factor this one by the number. If we pull the 3 out, that leaves us with the numbers 1 and 8. If we pull out a single x, there's still an x in the front, but there's no x in the back because we pulled it out. And if you were to multiply this, 3x times 1x is 3x squared. 3x times 8 is 24x. So it's still the same thing. It just looks different. Okay, it's equivalent. I'm going to scratch off the front one. I'm going to make it a hidden one because it'll make the next part a little bit more obvious. Okay, we're going to come up with the final answer. Here we go. Okay, low numbers. Find all the low numbers. See if they reduce or cancel. There is a single three. That's not going to help us. The single three doesn't reduce or cancel with anybody. Lone variables. X. There is no other lone X. He's still part of the answer. Factored polynomials. This one's different. We have an X plus 8 and an identical X plus 8 above it. Okay. They cancel by factors. Okay. We wouldn't have to cancel the parts. The entire thing cancels. We just lost all the polynomials. Now, they cancel into a hidden one, but because nothing's left on top, you put the hidden one so you can see it. You could put the one on the bottom, but it will multiply by 3, and it's still 3. So it's yeah, kind of a meh, yeah, whatever. All right, so there's the final answer. And look what it came from. It's much simpler now. Okay, a much, much simpler answer. 1 over 3x. All the polynomial stuff is done. It's actually reduced to a monomial on both top and bottom. Much easier to work with. All right, last one in this little section, and then we'll get into bigger polynomials. Okay, so remember what we're looking for. We're looking at lone numbers and lone variables, and we're looking in greatest common factors to see if we can find any more of them. Okay, I see a plus sign. Everybody in the, involved in the plus sign is part of the parentheses, each term. The 56 and the x, the 8 and the x squared, the 2 and the x, the entire 14. Okay, for those of you saying, ooh, 8 and 2, they can reduce. That's not an 8. That's an 8x squared plus 56x. And that's not a 2. That's a 2x plus 14. Okay, polynomials do not reduce by parts. You can't take part of the polynomial and reduce it. But you can find greatest common factors. So I'm going to pull an 8 out of the top because lone number. And I'm going to look to see if I can pull any of the lone variables, if there's a variable they've got in common as well. We'll get to that in a second. I'm going to pull a 2 from the bottom because I'm still concentrating on my lone numbers. Okay, So I got my lone numbers. Now I'm going to look for lone variables. Is there a variable that is in common to everybody in the polynomial? And the numerator, everybody's got an x. In the denominator, 14 doesn't have an x, so it's not in common. It needs to be a greatest common factor. Okay, so 8 and x. If I pull an 8 and an x, that leaves me with just an x in the front. And 56x, if I pull an 8 and an x, that should leave me with just a 7. And if you want to distribute and see if you can get back to the original, that's one way you can check your work. Okay, on the bottom, if I pull a 2, that leaves me with just an x. And from the 14, that's just 7. All right. We've got everybody as factored as they're going to get. It is time to see what can cancel or reduce. So we're going to look for the lone numbers, okay, 
Those are numbers that are not part of groups, not part of polynomials. Okay? 8 over 2, those are both low numbers. They can reduce. You get 4 over 1. You can get a 2 out of both of those. X, there are no other lone variables, so X is part of the answer. Polynomials. Remember, you have to reduce all of it or none of it. Okay, and all of it cancels. If it was just the sevens, you couldn't do it. Okay, so that's it. That's the answer. Now, because there's a one on the bottom, you can make that even simpler. You can just call it 4x. Because a one, if you divide it into something, nothing happens. It's still the something. You can have a final answer of 4x over 1. That's not wrong. I'm happy to accept that answer, but if you want to make it really simple, you want the just 4x. So we took a pretty complicated looking fraction and made it 4x. Okay, last part of this first in the series of the rationals. We're going to look at trinomials. Very terrifying. We're going to make them very simple. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to look to see if there are any low numbers, low variables, or if we can pull any out. That's the first thing we're looking for. Okay. Um, because what we see here is, well, there's an x squared on top, and it would be, you know, you could think, oh, I'll cancel that with the x squared on the bottom, except that ugh, these are polynomials. You cannot cancel their parts. You have to cancel everything or nothing in a polynomial. So when you see plus signs or minus signs, it is joining together a polynomial. Okay? You can't break that apart. It's like when you used to put two names and a plus sign between it in elementary and middle school and giggle and think it was so cute. You, you can't break them apart. It's, it's done now. That, that's it. Okay? Don't cancel their parts. Don't cancel the x squared with the other x squared. But what we can do is look for greatest common factors for both the low numbers and the variables because it makes the polynomials easier to work with. Okay, the numerator, there's not anything. 18 doesn't have a variable. There's no number that goes into all of them except maybe the number 1. So I'm just going to recopy this. Okay, no greatest common factor, so that's, yeah, we're pretty much, can't pull anything out. The denominator, though, is a different story. So the denominator, everybody has a variable, and a 3 can actually go into all the numbers. So we're going to pull out a lone 3. He is no longer part of the polynomial. We took him out of the polynomial. Okay, with the variables, you want to go for your greatest common factor, your greatest common variable. But it's kind of like the price is right. You can't go higher than anybody. So the biggest x is an x squared um, because there's two, or the smallest x is an x squared. The biggest one is an x to the fourth, but we can't go higher. You can't get an exponent higher than anybody. Okay, so now we're going to recreate the polynomial and see what it looks like when those things are removed. Okay, in the middle, 21x cubed. Take away the 3 and take away 2 of its x's. Remember, we're dividing these out. So that's a 7 and an x. And in the very, very back, there's a minus sign. So be really careful with your signs. Okay, they will make differences later on. And then once again, we're going to get the x squared out, so there's no more x, and 54 divided by 3 is that 18. Okay, do not cancel the 18s, okay? Don't do that. Those are parts of polynomials. Polynomials do not cancel by parts. They cancel by factors. So if these aren't matches, and they aren't, we have to factor them. Okay, so we have to factor that polynomial because we can't just cancel parts of it. So we're going to remember, how do, you can, how do you factor these things? Okay, trinomials usually factor into two parentheses. Okay, 
if there is nothing in front of your x squared, your leading term has a coefficient of 1, hidden 1, we're going to look to separate the back term. So we need things that times to 18 but add to 11, okay? Because that's the link between 18 and 11. So what are things that times to 18? Well, there's 18 times 1, there's 9 times 2, and there's 6 times 3. So 18 has three integer factors. There they are. Which of these will add to the 11? Well, probably the 9 and the 2. So that's how we know which factors to use. They have to add to the middle term. So in the front of the parenthesis, we're going to break up the front of the polynomial. x squared breaks into x times x. In the back of the parenthesis, we're going to break up the 18 into its 9 times 2 because they add to 11 and they will times to get the 18. Everybody's adding, which means everybody stays adding. Addition is the easy one. Okay, in the denominator, we have a lone 3. We took him out of the polynomial. We have a lone x squared. We took him out of the polynomial. And we have a larger polynomial that we can't cancel its parts. So we're going to factor it. Now, we have the same thing in the back, 18. So we're going to be using the same factors. But this time, we need something that subtracts to 7. 9 and 2, again, are, are what we're going to be using, okay? because that's the only set that will subtract to 7. So watch the sign in the middle. That's the link on how you get the middle. You either add or subtract to it. All right, x squared will break into x times x. 18 is going to break into the 9 times the 2, but here we have to figure out who gets the negative, because you can only have one negative if you're going to multiply 9 and 2 to get 18. So do we want 9 minus 2 or 2 minus 9? Well, the 7 is positive, so we probably want 9 minus 2. Okay, that means... The 2 is negative, and the 9 is positive. 9 times negative 2 is a negative 18. 9 minus 2 is that positive 7. So we have successfully factored it. It works. Okay, it is time to cancel things. Most people like the canceling thing part. Okay, we're looking for exact matches. Lone number, lone variable, uh, nothing. The 3, there's no other 3's, x squared, no other x squared, it's nothing to even reduce it. it we're we're kind of stuck. So we're stuck with 3, we're stuck with x squared because there's no lone number and no lone variable. Polynomials, we do have some matches. The x plus 9's can totally cancel out. The x's and 2's, though, cannot. They're conjugates, that means they're not exact matches. And we cannot cancel parts of them. You can't cancel the x's. You cannot cancel the 2's. You either cancel all of it or none of it. So here's what we've got left. In the denominator, there's an x minus 2 that will not cancel. Okay? And in the numerator, there's an x plus 2 that also just will not cancel. It needs an exact match so it can divide to 1. And it doesn't exist. Okay, sometimes in the key, you'll see the parentheses come off a lone polynomial if there's nothing else around it. I like to keep it in parentheses so that I don't accidentally start canceling parts without realizing I'm taking parts of the polynomial and canceling them. So I like to keep it in the parentheses so I can see where all the parts are, and I never cancel the parts. So we've made a big problem into something pretty small, a little bit easier to work with. Still has some weird stuff, but eh, it's better. Okay, next column. We're going to see if we can pull out lone variables and lone numbers, because we're going to start with polynomials. Okay, one thing I do see sometimes is people will say, oh, hey, well, what if I just group the first two and call that a polynomial? Or maybe just the last two. The whole thing is linked. Okay. It's one big giant train, so it's all linked in the giant polynomial train, the numerator and the denominator. Okay. You can't just isolate parts of it and start canceling them. Okay, so we're looking for lone numbers, 
and long letters that we can pull out of this stuff. So on top, we can pull out a 3. 3 divides into all three of those numbers. It has to hit all of them or none of them. Okay, X's, we want as big as we can possibly go, but you can't go higher than any of the exponents. So just a single X is about as bad, good as we can do. So now I'm going to show what the polynomial, polynomial looks like when we take those things away. Okay, so we're working on the middle part. 27 divide out that 3X, we're left with a negative 9X, so be careful with your signs, don't lose them. If we take the x out of the back, there's no more x, and 42 divided by the 3 should get us a 14. There we go. All right, we have found a greatest common factor for the top. So now we do have a lone 3, and we also have a lone x. The bottom is a little bit different. The bottom, there's not a number that goes into everything. And 98 doesn't have an x, so you can't even pull an x out. Now, remember I said you couldn't just do groups of them? That's true when you're looking to cancel things. That's not quite true when you're just factoring. So kind of off to the side here, this is when we factor by grouping. Okay? We're not going to cancel by grouping. We're going to factor by grouping. So in the first group, what is in common in the first group? Well, you can go as high as an x squared, okay? So if I take off the x squared, that leaves an x minus 2 in the first group. Last group, it starts with a negative. You want to pull the negative. And you can also pull a number that goes into both of those. 49 happens to go into both. So I'm pulling a negative and a 49. So if there's a negative leading your second group, pull the negative. That leaves an x in front. Now, when you pull the negative, you sign change everything because in order to get back to a positive, it needs to be negative times another negative. And then 2 is what's in the back. Negative 49 times negative 2 gets you a positive 98. Okay, now we're going to look at the whole thing. We've got two big terms. What do they have in common? They have a parenthesis in common. We have x minus 2, so we're going to take it away from both of them. And that will leave us with x squared minus 49. So in this case, a whole group of polynomial was the greatest common factor. So we pulled that off. And now we have two parentheses. And I'm going to replace them in the fraction. So now I'm back into the normal problem. So I took the denominator away and factored it. And then I put the factored version back into the fraction. All right, next up, let's go a little bit, let's see if we can break this apart even more. 3, uh, there's not a lot we can do with him, and there's no other lone numbers. X, still nothing. So, still got an X running around. Okay, on top, we have a trinomial. We can factor it again. So we want things that times to 14, but they're going to add to 9. It is a negative 9, but we're going to worry about that in a second. Right now, we're going to times to 14 and add to 9. Okay. Well, the only thing that adds to 9 out of those factors is probably a 7 and a 2. So we're going to set up the parentheses. So in the front, x squared will break into x times x. And in the back, we'll get 7 times 2, which will be a 14. But we have to add. Now we're going to worry about the negative. We're going to add to a negative 9. But we still have to times to a positive 14. So if one of these guys goes negative, but only one of them goes negative, you won't times to a negative four, or a positive 14. It'll be negative instead. So how do we get them to add to a negative 9, but times to a positive 14? And the answer is they both go negative. So negative 7 plus negative 2, there's your negative 9. Negative 7 times negative 2, that's a positive 14. So that's how that works. If you add to a negative number, that everybody's negative. Okay, on the bottom we still have an x minus 2, um, and he will cancel with that x minus 2. Some of you may want to do that now. That's totally fine. This back parenthesis, though, has more possibilities. See the squared in it. If you have a squared on an x, it's possible it can be factored again. Okay, the first parenthesis 
there was no square. He has a hidden one. But this guy, x squared, it's possible he will factor one more time. In fact, this is difference of squares. If you want to think about it, it's like there's a 0x missing in the middle. Okay, so what can times to 14 but subtract to 0? Well, they better be the same number, and that's why difference of squares are so important. Because 49 has a square root. It's 7 and 7. And they 7 minus 7, that's your 0. So we have a plus 7 and a minus 7. Okay? X, and x is x squared. 7 and negative 7 is negative 49. And those are conjugates. Okay? Conjugates means you can just times front and back because the middle's canceling. Okay? So the 7x from the inside and the negative 7x from the outside, that's 0x. All right, cancel time. 3 and x. There's no number, there's no variable. Yeah, they're, we're just kind of stuck with those. But x minus 7, those are gone now. x minus 2, we've got a numerator and a denominator version of those. So we can cancel them. And remember, you have to cancel the entire parenthesis or none of it. You cannot just cancel part of it. Last but not least, there's an x plus 7, and we cannot cancel that x with the x on the 3x. x plus 7 is part of a polynomial. You cannot cancel parts. Okay? The reason is fractions are grouping symbols. It groups those together. And in PEMDAS, parentheses come first. So we cannot cancel, because a fraction is division. We cannot put division ahead of parentheses. So that's your answer. And again, those x's don't cancel, okay? Because the x on the bottom is part of a polynomial. You cannot cancel the parts. Okay, so we've just turned a massive, scary-looking thing into a very small fraction, much smaller than what we started with. We like that. That makes us happy. Okay, we have got one more to go. This one, this one's going to be a little bit different, a little scary. It will be okay. We will get through it together. Okay, first of all, greatest common factors. Can I pull anything out? Uh, not in the top. So the top is just kind of pretty much his own little parentheses. So 2x squared minus x minus 21. Okay. There's no number that goes into all three. There's no letter that can go into all three. Nothing's in common. The denominator's different, though, because there is a number that can go into both front and the back. We can pull out the number 2. That's about it, though, because 18 does not have an x, so we cannot pull out a variable. So what's left after we take away the 2, we get x squared, and again, if you take away the 2 from the back, that should be minus 9. Okay, so we've, got, we've made a little bit of progress. Okay, the top. Look at those squares. That means there's a possibility this can break even further. Okay, the problem is the 2 in the front, the top 2, not the bottom 2 that we pulled. That's a problem. Okay, if you just say, oh, what can times to 21 and subtract to whatever's in the middle. You can't do that anymore because the two in the front wants to be involved. Okay, And in order for him to be involved, we're going to do slide divide, which sometimes has a final slide. Okay, Because the two in front wants to get involved. You can't just run with the back. So if you have a front number like that two, we're going to pull that away and we're going to slide divide. Okay, first of all, we're going to slide. We're going to slide. We're going to grab the 2 and slide it into the back by multiplying. So we still have x squared minus x, but the 2 in the front has now slid into the back and multiplied. There it is. So we've changed it. And I'm working on this kind of on the side because this isn't really part of the fraction. This is just me messing around with the front. Okay, there's a hidden one. 
the link is subtraction, so we're going to subtract to a hidden one. So what can go into 42? Well, 1 in 42, 2 in 21, and then there's 3 and 14. 4 doesn't go in, 5, no. 6, yes, though, 6 and 7, and that's, that's it. Those are our factors. So what can subtract to 1? Probably the 6 and the 7. Okay, so we will create parentheses. X in front, and we've got our 7 and our 6. Okay, when we subtract, we need a negative 1. So do we want 7 minus 6? No, that's a positive 1. What about 6 minus 7? That's a negative 1. That means 6 gets the plus. Okay, in order to do this, we slit. We cheated. That means we have to undo it. It's kind of like parallel circuits. You flip them, add them, and then unflip. So we slid and multiplied. We have to backtrack now. We have to divide. So we divide out what we slid. We slid a 2 into the back, and he's not supposed to be there. He wanted to be there, and we let him go, but we, yeah, we, we need to get him back out again. Now, if dividing him doesn't work, that's when that optional last slide comes in. 7 divided by 2 is not an integer, so you slide the 2 back to the front. 6 divided by 2 does work, so that's a 3. If you want to see if you did this right, we're going to compare it with the original polynomial it all came from. So 2x times x, 2x squared, negative 7 times 3 is a negative 21. The middle comes from inside outside, so inside we have a negative 7 times x, outside 3 times 2x, that's 6x. So inside is a negative 7x, outside is a 6x. That will combine to a negative 1x. Okay, so that is the factoring for the top. So I just kind of did that on the side. So I'm going to replace the numerator with the factors I came up with. Okay, and if you're not sure about slide divide, you don't remember how to do that, okay, backtrack into unit 4 and 5. That's where we did lots of it. Okay. All right, on the bottom, we still have 2, but look at that x squared. That x squared can factor even more. Okay. This is a difference of squares. Both of these have square roots. Okay. They factor, if they're subtracting, they factor into conjugates. Okay. So it factors, and you know, conjugates without i's and radicals. So an x and an x, and then 9 factors into 3 and 3. And since it's a negative 9, 1's plus, 1's minus. Those are conjugates. Okay, that's where you can do the front times the front and the back times the back. Okay, the inside would be a 3x, the outside would be a negative 3x, and they would cancel. That's why there's no middle. All right, we've got everybody factored. This is everybody's favorite part. It's time to cancel because in canceling you get to exercise all your inner rage at math and cross parts of it off. Two does not cancel with two though. Two, the top two is part of a polynomial. The x plus threes will cancel. Yes, work out all that rage. Cross off the math. That math is gone. Okay, we still have a 2x minus 7 on top. I'm going to go ahead and keep him in parentheses, even though there is nothing else up there, because it helps to remind that the 2s aren't going to cancel. So that's why I'm going to keep him in parentheses. On the bottom, there's still a 2 left over, and there's also an x minus 3 left over. Okay, and that's it. Okay, 2x minus 7 is a big polynomial. It doesn't cancel with anybody. Okay, and we've got on the bottom a 2 and an x minus 3. You don't have to redistribute anything. Just let that be it. Let that be the answer. Keep it in parentheses. Keep it nice and simple. And we're done.